So in this part, we are going to discuss just the concepts of calculus. No math, nothing. Simply concept, just to get an idea of what exactly calculus is. So instead of going through a definition, I'm just going to give you some examples to make it clear. So let's suppose you're driving a car that's going 70 miles an hour, exactly 70 miles an hour. So here it is. This line is 70 miles an hour. So if somebody asks you, what's the rate of change with respect to time? Now remember, rate of change of speed, not the distance, speed. Well, here you're going 70 miles an hour, here 70 miles an hour, here 70 miles an hour. You're not changing your speed at all. It's 70 miles an hour. So what do we put? We put delta speed over delta time. Change in speed over change in time is zero. Why? Because change in speed is zero. It's always 70 miles an hour. Okay. Let's look at this way now. The price of a used car decreases by 15 cents for every extra mile driven, which means every mile you drive, it goes down by 15 cents going down. So once again, slope is negative 15, which means rise over run is negative 15. Rate of change with respect to mile is minus 0.15. One extra mile, minus 0.15. And here we have is change in price over change in miles. If you drive 10 miles, the price though goes down by $1.50, which is again minus 0.15. The key thing here is this. There are car which has 10,000 miles on it. If you drive one extra mile, you lose the price by 15 cents. If a car has 80,000 miles on it, you drive one mile, it goes down by 15 cents, which means it's constant. Now let's look at another example. In this situation, if you want to add one more square foot, how much will it cost? Well, this is the price per square foot. 130, 135, 140, etc., etc. So how much extra will cost? Well, that depends on where you are. If you are here, it's going to become less, cost less because as you go down, the per square foot price goes down. Not the price of the house, per square foot price goes down. If you are here, it's a different. If you are here, it's a different. If you are here, it's a different. So what you see is, if your house is kind of small, if you make it slightly bigger, the square foot price goes down because the small houses cost more since there are lots of setup costs involved, the management costs, the rental costs, everything is there. Then there's an optimum level of size where everything's going to perfectly matching. And then you start increasing the price per square foot again because big houses are built by rich people. And rich people like customized things. Everything's customized. The roof might be different style. The walls might be bigger. Who knows? So somebody says, I have a house. I want to add one more square foot. How much will it cost? Your question will be, where are you? Are you here, here, or here? Now compare this again to what we discussed there. In this case, if somebody says, I want to drive one extra mile, by how much the price will go down? You don't ask, where are you? Because it doesn't matter. Whether you're here, 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 it's same constant, 15 cents going down. Whereas in our, this picture, it depends on where you are. So now let's do one more thing. This is very rough animation, which took a long time to create uh, in PowerPoint, but it's kind of fun. So this is the bucket full of water, and this is empty bucket. And let's see what happens. There, water going down and the bucket is getting filled, the bottom bucket. What's special about it? The rate of change of water falling from there to there is not constant. In the beginning, the flow is much, much more. It goes down with time, which roughly is like this. In the beginning, the flow is quite fast, but then gradually it goes down and becomes really, really small. Okay, so, what do we have? Differential calculus basically finds the rate of the flow at any given point. That basically means that at, let's say, four-second point, what's the rate of flow? 
at 10 second point, what's the rate of the flow? So that's differential calculus. Going back to our house example, same thing. If I'm at 2300 square feet, what's the extra cost of squ per square foot of the house? If I'm 2700 square feet range, what is the cost? So that's differential calculus, rate of change. And what's integral calculus? Rate of filling or the volume or the area. Now remember, because this is changing, so is this. So in the beginning, it's filling much, much faster. Then it slows down. So integral calculus tells you what's the volume between suppose, let's say two and four seconds or three and five seconds or six and eight seconds. Remember it's a different because the rate is different. So differential calculus, rate of change, integral calculus gives you the area, the volume during certain period. So in other picture, in other way, differential calculus is rate of change. How much y change with respect to x? Integral calculus will be how much water we have between three to eight seconds. And as I said earlier, three to eight is not the same as two to seven. It's not the same as one to say six. It's not the same five seconds. So differential calculus, rate of change, integral calculus, the area, the volume during that period. So what we have here, differential calculus finds the slope, rate of change. What is it here? What is it there? What is there? What you see interesting is at this point, the slope is zero, right? Rate of change is zero. And that we can say is going to be our minimum point. That's minimum point right there. But slope is zero here too. That's the maximum point. So how do, can we tell that slope zero is min or max point without looking at the picture, which we don't look at the picture typically because functions are, cannot be always drawn. But be smart. Look at this. What's happening with the slope? It is negative, very negative, less negative, zero, positive, more positive. It is positive, less positive, zero, negative. In this case, the slope is increasing from negative to positive. It's a plus. In this case, it's decreasing from positive to zero. So what do you find the rate of change of slope itself? How the slope is changing? And that's how you find the min versus max point. If the slope is decreasing, if it's a negative, we are looking at the max point decreasing from positive to negative. If it's increasing from negative to positive, it's the min point. So once we find the slope itself, we can find the rate of change of the slope. And depending on how the rate of change is, we can say it's the max point or the min point. So for this video, this is enough. I just wanted to give you a visualization of calculus. What exactly it is? What is differential calculus? What is integral calculus? In the later videos, we are going to do visualization using Excel. I'll show you exactly with our calculus how we can do all this work. And then we're going to solve the real pro calculus problems using also max and min type. This is the real math, real differential calculus. Then in other videos, we're going to have integral calculus and also again is solved using Excel. Once again, I'm a big fan of Excel, by the way. And then we're going to also do real math of some simple integral calculus. So that after watching these three or four videos, you should be pretty comfortable with calculus in terms of knowing what it is and in terms of solving problems. And hopefully you learn for good.